Hey guys, Ziv here. Welcome to episode seven. I'm gonna discuss solar versus battery and what choices are gonna be involved when you're upgrading your house with solar and battery. Sorry, I'm trying to stay out the wind. I've noticed on some of my videos, it doesn't like my microphone. So I've strapped a bit of like helmet foam <laughs> around the mic and we're gonna see how this works. See if uh, we can get rid of a bit of this wind and I'm sticking behind this uh, tree cover. So, I think a battery is more important than solar these days. Now to put that into context, I live in South Australia. Um, if you're up in say Darwin, where I've lived as well, the everything looks different up there. Um, what you're really looking at is the price difference between your peak energy on your bill and your your off peak energy. So in Darwin, it's very low, and it's probably the same in Brisbane, a very low price difference. You might be paying. I'm just making this up, but say 25 cents um, off peak and 35 cents peak. So you got a 10 cent difference there. Now, when you move to South Australia, where the grid is totally different, we've got plenty of renewables. You do as well in Darwin. You got your own solar as well, if you have some. The price difference as far as the national energy market is concerned, the wholesale price of energy is, it fluctuates a lot more. So when you have that fluctuation, you can take advantage of it. If you have your own solar already, you can take advantage of it because, with a battery because you're getting free energy, but you're not getting it when you need to use it. Generally, we use most of our energy first thing in the morning, flick the kettle on, put the washing in the washing machine, whatever it is. And then our primary energy use is in the, really in the evening. Get home, do the cooking, chuck on the oven, watch a movie, jump on the computer, whatever it is, we're using a lot more in the evening. And that's just the, your typical household. So if you've got solar, you're not using all that energy anyway. Often it gets exported and people are looking for good feed-in tariffs, which are getting reduced and reduced. They're getting reduced because we are getting too much renewables into the grid during the daytime. In, in South Australia and around Australia as well. Base load power, the, the coal and gas plants, even nuclear, they can't just switch off when the renewables come on. They can ramp down, that's about it. So they have to, to keep the grid stable, they have to supply a certain amount of energy into the grid. So when we top that up with wind and predominantly solar in the daytime, because those plants have to stay on, we get this oversupply of energy. And wholesale prices can drop to the negatives. <laughs> the power companies will practically pay you to take energy doesn't always happen every day and I'm sure it'll get sorted out as more interconnectors between the states are made there's one getting built between New South Wales and Australia at the moment South Australia at the moment then we can export to New South Wales additional solar and we can share between the grids right but there's just too much solar and like in South Australia they're gonna, they are shutting off your solar. If you've got solar, through your smart meter, they can turn off your solar because there's just too much. So, 
if you're choosing to buy solar or battery and you somewhat believe in using renewable energy rather than coal or whatever and you like saving money you can jump onto a wholesale price supplier like amber electric or a company that will pass on pretty much wholesale rates but at fixed prices so i'm with io energy and my import during daylight hours is eight cents a kilowatt it's super cheap but then my peak at <laughs> 7 p.m at night is 70 cents so you can see the 25 to 35 cents that's normal my peak and my dip is totally different but I can take advantage of that by charging my battery during the, the 8 cent or if you're with Amber or getting the wholesale rate when it's you know right down low or even negative when they're paying you to get the power and then use it when it's at a super high price off of the battery and that's just going to help firm up the grid so they're installing batteries all around Australia for this purpose. When we get those spikes, the batteries kick in. They're one, two hour batteries. And they do primarily grid firming. And that's what you're doing with your own small battery. You're firming your personal supply into renewables or into more cost effective energy. So then you're looking at the payback period. If I'm saving on a wholesale price, which is the actual price of electricity, you know, if I'm on eight cents, let's call it 10 cents, and the peak is 70 cents, I'm saving 60 cents a kilowatt. The payback period, it becomes a lot quicker. It's within warranty period for most people, which is great. The other thing is all your energy is at eight cents a kilowatt or 10 cents or nothing. It costs me nothing to charge the car. I've only got a seven kilowatt solar system. I'd be having to pay to charge my car quite a bit on a, any normal energy plan. But because I can set it to charging during the day and charge off my neighbor's solar and his neighbor's solar because there's an oversupply, that means they don't have to get their solar turned off. They still get a feed-in tariff. You get really cheap power and you can charge your car. It's, it's, uh, it's great. So you're putting all that renewable energy into something that you can then use later, whether it's a home battery, car battery, whatever. So my argument is there's enough solar you know, solar started in the 90s and Australians have been going crazy with it. And we're getting to the point where there's enough solar where you don't have to buy the solar system anymore. You can just buy the battery. They're roughly the same price. A, a, a good solar system for most resi like residential house roof sizes that you can fit on, you know, it's going to be seven and a half kilowatt. If you're on a single phase, you're often by the supplier, the network, going to be regulated how many kilowatts of inverters you can have on a single phase anyway. So usually in South Australia, that's five kilowatts. So you can get a seven kilowatt system on and then with the inefficiencies and the dropouts, it's usually never exporting more than five kilowatts. So that's a fairly typical system to chuck on. They can be really cheap if you <laughs> go for the cheap Chinese stuff. But if you buy Australian made or good German made or American made stuff, I don't know, I haven't checked what solar prices are, but I would say it's between five to 10, up to 15 grand, right? Uh, I think mine with micro inverters and everything and Australian made panel was up there. I can't actually remember off the top of my head what it was. And then the batteries also 
10, 15 grand, depending on what you get. Could be a bit more, could be a bit less, get it on sale, all of that sort of stuff. So they're similar prices. Yes, the battery might be a little bit more expensive than a typical seven kilowatt system, six kilowatt, five kilowatt system, just because there's so much cheap solar out there and batteries are still reaching that efficiencies of scale, getting them out. Um, but you can see your investment is similar. Not the same, but similar. And then you can still be using solar with your battery. You're just get, getting the energy off of the daytime. Hopefully you're not getting it, using it like on a, what is it, controlled load in the evening. You put on your controlled load in the middle of the night. Your off peak is set to the middle of the night. That's really for firming again. Once again, those generators, gas, whatever, they can't ramp down to a very minimum. So we had these cheaper rates over the middle of the night when no one was using electricity to keep those power generators on. So a lot of companies give their cheapest rate overnight, but that's not renewable energy. That's not what we want to get on. Energy is really free if you consider solar. It's, it's very, very cheap. And running big gas or coal or whatever power stations just to keep the power on overnight. I mean, you need to do it, but if we can avoid that and incentivize the companies to move away from that, then that's good. So getting energy during the day and then using it for yourself overnight with your own battery, you've got solar. You've got solar 24 seven. Whereas if you just install solar panels, you got solar during the day and usually not when you need it most morning and evening with the battery it charges during the day in the evening discharges hopefully it gets you through the night for most people it might not just a single battery depending on how much power you use but it'll get you through that evening peak period hopefully <clears throat> and then yeah see how you add solar later when you get an electric car when you have more batteries and you really want to dump a lot of free energy into them because unless you can use all that solar energy what's the point of having it yeah your feed-in tariffs are gone practically you know four cents is a typical rate eight cents something like that is your feed-in tariff now in south australia anyway it's it's higher up in darwin once again where there's less renewables in the grid and you know i consider darwin to be 10 years behind it'll change and it'll catch up so the battery is still probably a wise idea there and you can still play around but you're not going to get that quicker payback period on your battery so anyway that's why i think you should buy a battery if you think otherwise chuck it down in the comments and we can discuss it further <laughs> cheers see you on the next one